Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be another Reaper tutorial, kind of taking the next steps after uh, the beginner's video. So I'm kind of assuming that you may have watched that or if you just have gained some uh, basic level understanding of how to operate in Reaper, this will hopefully give you some second steps. So um, first and foremost, let's talk about some workflow type adjustments. Um, so first and foremost is one of the things that I have done is remapped some of the mouse options. So right now I am scrolling vertically. This is just with my mouse cursor or my mouse wheel. Uh, by default, I believe this is set to horizontal zoom, which is what I'm doing right now. And that really bothered me. So I remapped that. So to show you how to do that, you would just go to action, show action list. And then you want to just do um, scroll. Scroll vertically. So this one right here, adjust vertical scroll. I'm sorry, this one right here. Let me double check. This guy right here, scroll vertically, MIDI CC relative mouse wheel. This is the one, boom, right here. So um, I just clicked add and then just scrolled my mouse wheel up and down and hit OK. And then we're good there. And then I changed, so that changed uh, zoom horizontally. Um, so that would be this one. And so I changed that to be control uh, plus all plus mouth mail. You can really do whatever you want with this, but I would just suggest you tinker around with that in the actions show action list because some of those shortcuts are really, really handy. And uh, the more you use them, the better off you'll be. So like I can do all of these things, uh, go up and down. I can zoom in. I can move right and left, all with just different combinations of control, alt, and my mouse wheel, which I really like. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking that out. The uh, next thing is grouping tracks and using colors. So uh, these are all the tracks that I've created for this song, and there's quite a few different ones. And I like to group tracks and then use colors just so that it helps my brain stay organized. Otherwise, you're looking at just a big gray mess, and everything tends to mesh together. So I tend to make, to make colors. I try to get a little bit of a pattern going. So... Um, so for this one, I think acoustic, and I kind of did an orange thing because acoustic guitars are brown or orange. just kind of made sense to my brain. For vocals, I did violet, violet vocals, and then uh, guitar green, electric guitar is green. Um, really a lot of different ways you can do it. This guy needs to be green as well. And so let me show you how to do that. So let's start off with grouping. So um, I've done a lot of grouping in this track, and so what you're looking to is this line, this little indentation. Here on the left, you can see I have an acoustic master and then three subtracks underneath it. Actually, this one's not doing anything, so let's just get rid of it. So I have an acoustic track and then a reverb track, uh, which is just wet reverb, and then this is just dry acoustic. So then what this does is um, this allows me to do any sort of master adjustments that I want done to everything related to the acoustic guitar on the master channel, and then any specific adjustments to be done here. So for example, on this reverb channel, I have some very specific EQing, um, the actual reverb plugin itself, and then a compressor. While on this dry track, I don't have anything, and then I just use my overarching compression, compression and EQ on the master track. Similar story on the vocals. You can see I actually have two tiers here. So I have an overall master vocal, which just includes some very basic reverb and EQ. Then I have my main vocals, the reverb of the main vocals, and then I have another subtract just for background vocals. So this contains just these three uh, different harmony bark background vocals types things. So then with these, I actually have a different, I put a reverb on here to kind of push them into the back and give it a little bit more like a chorus pad type experience. And then on the electric, I just have some different things. I actually was experimenting some different sounds on the solo. So that's why I have this. So Let's talk about how to do that. Let's see, which color was it? That might not be right. Oh, it is right. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do that. So first I'm going to create a new track and then create another one. So then what you're looking at is this box right here. It says cycles whether the track is a track folder or the last track in a folder. So if you press it once, that means that this track becomes the master folder. And then everything underneath it, if I just make... Um, all sorts of new tracks, they will all become subsidiaries of this one. So whatever I do to this track 
in terms of volume or panning or EQ gets applied to everything underneath it. Then you can do, if I press it again, that creates another folder within the folder. So you can do this infinitely. Or you can, if you go again, you can say this is the last track in the folder. So you can see what I did there is, um, now this becomes the last track. So this becomes the last track in this folder. But if I do it again, that means that this is the last track in this folder. So you can really organize or reorder things, these things however you want. Uh, but it's just a really handy trick for kind of grouping things and organizing things the way you want them to. It's just really handy. And then with colors, if you if you click one and select, hold the select the shift key and then click again. So I'm going to click on this first track, hold shift, click again. It selects everything in between. Alternatively, you can click once and hold down control and then click, 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 or unclick one at a time. All of those things will select all of these tracks at once. And then you just right click and then go to track color, set tracks to custom color, and do whatever you want. I have found that these workflow type improvements help me to work more efficiently and just to work smarter, um, keep things more organized. And those really helps, especially if you're going for a big multi-track. Just a lot of good stuff there. Um, and so, yeah, those are kind of some of my workflow tips. Another one is to use these guys right here. You can see um, I've got some, these are called markers. I've got one for pre-chorus, chorus, chorus 2, pre-chorus, chorus 2. So when I tracked my acoustic guitar, that's the way I songwrite or arrange or compose is typically through guitar. I'm a guitar player first. My musical brain operates as a guitar player. But sometimes I want other things to happen, or I don't exactly know what I want to do, and I just start with an electric guitar. So with this one, I just sat down, and I put the click on, and I just played all of the acoustic parts that I thought I would want. And then I allowed myself with editing and snipping and cutting and pasting to piece it together the way I wanted. And then if I really wanted it to be, to be perfect, I could just go back and re-record it after everything has all been done, but I thought this worked really well. But one of the way, things that enable that is this use of markers. So what you do there, this is actually very easy. So let's say, um, let's see, when does the solo start? Looks like it starts. Yeah, yep, right there. So um, what I would do is I've got my cursor right here, and then I go up to the top, this meter here, and I right click, and then press insert marker, or you can hit shift M, and then you name it whatever you want. And so what that does is when you're recording something, so for example, uh, like I said, I started off with the acoustic and I just kind of was playing. Then I know, okay, this is how many measures until the pre-chorus, and that might be when I need to change the strumming pattern or I need to start doing some vocal things. Or, uh, for example, when I was recording these parts, these these harmonies, vocal harmonies, they are only occurring during like the chorus and then the second part of the chorus. So, again, I had these as kind of hand, handy reminders of, you know, I didn't want to start at the beginning and have to listen to it all, and then just to record this little section. And this little section, you can use it to kind of move around your mix more quickly just to help organize things. Um, and then the last tip I'll share with you is to kind of get a feel for some of these buttons. They're very, very handy. So the metronome is right here, just in case you did not know. But then this one, this grid lines and then snap editing, this is very, very useful stuff to use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and mess with it so then I can just get rid of it when I don't want it. Um, let's just solo this guy out. So, um, you know what, I think I'm having a weird plug-in thing that's muting what's going on. It has to be, yep, I think it's this guy. I bet it'll play now. Okay, I have something weird happening there, but I don't necessarily want to mess a lot of time with that. But, um, so let's talk about what these functions can do. So when I was playing this solo, there was a little piece of it that got a little bit off tempo. And so you can actually fix that. Now, typically, right now, we are in grid mode. So these lines are enabled, and these, these match with the measures, the beats of the song. So my BPM is 72. So these, these measures here, these vertical lines, will indicate that and match up with those measures, which is really handy for organizing a piece of music. But then on the flip side, um, and then also snap is enabled. So if I move this, you can see it's 
it will only move one if you watch right here it will only move one entire block I can't move halfway in between it just goes 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 snap uh, sometimes you don't necessarily want that so what I could do let's say maybe I highlighted that this is the section that is a little bit off time so I can turn off the grid I can turn off snap editing and now if I hold shift I can just move this guy actually I'm just I'm just moving it maybe it's just a slightly early so I can just move it back and then I can turn the grid back on whereas previously I was it see now how it just snaps right back to where it was well, with the grid off then you're golden you can make some more fine-tuned adjustments um, and with 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 snap enabled off as well so I hope that these tips help these are just kind of some workflow type things um, there are so so much more that you can do in re in Reaper it's just kind of barely scratches the surface but hopefully some of these kind of workflow tips and tricks helps to get you guys to be more efficient and really if you have questions feel free to ask in the comment section or just Google it Reaper has a very helpful forum um, a lot of good stuff out there so hope you guys enjoyed it I'll see you again soon bye